Welcome, curious minds. Today, we'll peek at the Parisian home of the iconic French aristocrat, fashion designer and collector Le Grand Hubert, or Hubert de Givenchy. What does his nickname mean? Givenchy was six foot six tall, metaphorically and physically, towering over his gifted contemporaries. He is considered one of the most significant post-war couturiers, and his debut haute couture collection impressed Paris in 1952. A 25-year-old Hubert had to stick to a small budget, but it hadn't prevented him from showing innovative, unexpected silhouettes. After opening his fashion house in 1952, Hubert de Givenchy dressed Jackie Kennedy, the Duchesses of Windsor and Devonshire, Marella Agnelli, and his close friend and lifetime muse, Audrey Hepburn. The iconic little black dress in Breakfast at Tiffany's was the creation of Givenchy. We have also reviewed Hepburn's houses, so if you want to watch this video, we'll leave the link in the description. Hubert de Givenchy's work and lifestyle reflected the same sense of innovation and impeccable eye for detail. Subsequently, he purchased several spectacular residences. The Hôtel de Rouet on Rue de Grenelle in Paris, the Manoir du Jean Chay in the Loire Valley, a chalet in Megève with a view of Mont Blanc, and an apartment at the Carlisle Hotel in New York. The Hôtel de Rouet was one of his two most famous homes. The Chateau du Jean Chay was the second one. This elegant residence was built for a Marquise Marguerite Paul de Grivel de Rouet in 1731. The building on Rue de Grenelle was designed in the High Regency style by the French architect Pierre Boscri. The Hôtel de Rouet, also known as the Hôtel de Beaufremont, became a French national monument in 1926. Its massive garden, cobblestone courtyard, and oversized double, lacquered, dark green door make it one of the most magnificent private homes in Paris. The acclaimed couturier had long had his eye on it before he finally bought it. His close friend and collector, Susan Gutfreund, offered Givenchy to sell him the second floor in 1986, and the designer accepted the deal. He spent seven years on the Hôtel de Rouet renovations, what I try to achieve is principally a harmony between architecture, decoration, and color, explained the couturier. Uber purchased the ground floor when it became available. To collect the needed sum, Uber even placed various key pieces from his collection at the Christie's auction in 1993. The exterior of Hotel Dorouet is spectacular. It's hidden from the street by a solid carved limestone wall, adding privacy to the inhabitants. The interiors were also grandiose. Let's start with the first floor landing. The entrance alone was evidence of Givenchy's approach to interiors. It was very contemporary, with simple wood paneling, painted, and no gilding. And contemporary pictures, the Giacometti bronze, and some modern sofas and chairs, some 18th century objects as well. Then he had Regency armor, which had a monumentality. I think he had a fantastic understanding of scale. The hotel rooms look welcoming, comfortable, and filled with a subtle serenity. The decor was tasteful yet simple, with off-white boiseries, absence of gilding, and silk taffeta creamy curtains. Pictures by Picasso, Miro, and Kurt Schwitters reflect Givenchy's love for art. These chairs feature elegant suede and leather upholstery with an acanthus leaf pattern that was inspired by the Mobilier Crozat, a Regence console in the Petit Salon once belonged to the iconic Coco Chanel. To the right of the fireplace stands Giacometti's plaster sculpture, Woman Walking. Three famous paintings adorn the Petit Salon of the Hôtel de Rouet. Picasso's Faune with a Spear and Faune et Tête de Femme, 
and Anthony Tapie's Son Titre. Due to his immaculate taste, grand intellect, and sharp eye, Hubert Givenchy was an outstanding decorator. His nephew Olivier said, He had the ability to make a room not feel decorated. There was no feeling that everything had been planned. He began with a vision, and over time he filled up his vision with the objects he found. Now, let's proceed to another salon in the Hotel Dorouet, where modern art mingled with 17th-century boule cabinets, rugged stone floors, and Diego Giacometti furnishings. Louis de Fourchnon's andirons, sconces mounted to the wall, a squat table, and a gold-framed mirror evoked the King's Versailles Hall. The salon's Louis Siftusen chairs, side tables, and busts recall the elegant taste of the fashionable Marie Antoinette. The interior is a blend of Rococo and neoclassical styles. The composition boasts symmetry and harmony, making the salon look purposeful and neat. The Salon Vert became his most well-known interior. When creating the design, Hubert drew inspiration from his friends Geoffroy's and Coco Chanel's signature styles. André Charles Boulle's masterpieces complemented dark green silk velvet lined walls. Unique 18th century chairs coexisted with bronze sculptures and silver bibelots. White and gold decoration by Nicola Pinot and family black glazed Chinese porcelain vases completed the dramatic atmosphere. The Salon Vert was the center of the entire hotel, offering direct access to a fire in the winter and the large garden in the summer. Givenchy was a keen collector and invested a lot in decorating his home interiors. He wanted to create a cozy nest for himself and his life partner, Philippe Venet, who had worked with Givenchy as a master tailor until 1962. However, the couturier didn't randomly accumulate objects. He had an impeccable taste. We can suggest this craving for collecting items arose from his childhood. Hubert's family was Protestant, which implied a certain asceticism in France. Givenchy started saving money for his first beautiful object, a gilt wood Louis de Sixtois Berger, when he had the opportunity. Then, his haul began. The couturier bought the highest quality objects he could afford. He explained, little by little, I pursued my dream of acquiring furniture from the 17th and 18th centuries and contemporary art. This is proven by the tasteful decor of the drawing room at the Hotel Dorouet, which overlooks the garden and the red bedroom with whimsy wallpapers. Once inside the hotel, it is clear that the same elegant aesthetic is at work. There is opulence and luxury in terms of materials, ormolu mounted or gilded furniture, mirrors, candelabra, hardstone vessels, mirror black vases and bronzes, plus rich embroideries and carpets, and a profusion of objects, but there is a rigor and symmetry in their arrangement that ensures an effect that is masculine and surprisingly unfussy. Nothing is extraneous. As you can see, the designer adhered to the principle that the classical never meant boring. As we are in Givinci's bedroom, take a look at Miro's Le Passager de Louis Migrateur. This painting was the last artwork the couturier saw at night and the first that greeted him in the morning. As we can see, Givenchy implemented his unique aesthetic vision, an inborn sense of scale and proportion in his Parisian home's design. He meticulously considered how to use items to display their best advantage in each room. He balanced grand and everyday pieces, which gave his interiors a timeless modernity. Though his interiors might not seem radical nowadays, Givenchy combined various styles when it was far from the norm. He spoke of himself as the eternal apprentice, constantly seeking new ideas. 
The designer was always on the move, enriching his interiors with fresh ideas and works of art. This explains why Givenchy remains a source of inspiration for decorators and collectors worldwide. How do you like Givenchy's Parisian safe haven? Which detail most grasped your attention in today's video? Please share your thoughts and insights with us.